Good morning. Welcome to the worship service of Glen Burnie United Church. I'm Reverend Elizabeth Bohm Wilson, the minister who has the pleasure of serving here. We're so glad that you could join us for worship today, and we thank you for welcoming us into your home. We begin our worship by lighting candles, each of us wherever we are. The candlelight reminds us that the light of Christ is with us in every place. And it is the light and the love of Christ that draws us together into community. Today we fall back, not just our clocks to usher in the shorter and dimmer days of winter, but also in this worship service today, we fall back upon our memories of loved ones who have died. We fall back upon the emptiness that we still feel at their absence. We fall back in gratitude for the cloud of witnesses who have paved the way for us. We fall back upon our faith that just as the Holy Spirit has walked with our loved ones, so God's Spirit walks with us. Let us also fall back into the arms of loved ones who are still with us, remembering to tell them how much they mean to us. And in this time of worship, let us fall back into the ever-present arms of God, saying thank you. Shall we pray? O oh God of the past and the future, we praise you for this present moment. Fill us with your joy and empower us with your Holy Spirit, that our strength may be renewed, to sing a new song of your glory in a world which longs for justice and peace. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen.
for the Sunday from Psalm 145, verses 3 and 4, and then 7 to 21. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your work to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in love. The Lord is good to all. The Lord, the Lord has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of, a, of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The, the Lord, Lord has, has compassion, compassion on all he has made. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The Lord has compassion on all he has made. The eyes of all look to you, to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord has compassion on all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who love him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. The Lord has compassion on all he has made. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Today is a special day on the church calendar that is called All Saints Day. It's a day when we remember all the saints of the Christian faith. But do you know what a saint is? Now, some people, when they think of saints, think of people who were really extra special, people who were especially good, people who were very holy, who did beautiful and amazing things as they tried to serve God with their lives. There, there have been and are a lot of remarkable people like that, and I'm going to introduce you to a few of those saints. But it's important to know that saints are not just these exceptional people. In the Bible, we learn that everyone who follows Jesus, who tries to live lives that are pleasing to God, we are all called saints. Saints are people through whom God shines. And we're supposed to do that too, to let God's light shine from us. So now let me begin by introducing you to a few of those really exceptional people who are called saints. This is Saint Hildegard. She lived a very long time ago. She was a very intelligent woman. She was a writer and a philosopher, and she was also very musical. She composed her own music. And through her writing and her music, she sought to know God and to help others know God. This is a picture of Saint Francis. There is a story told about Francis that he grew up as a very rich young man and he was working for his father in the marketplace selling velvet cloth and a very poor man came and begged from him and it changed Francis and Francis gave away everything he had. He, he gave away everything he had to help people who were poor, like the man who had begged from him. And Francis' life was forever changed. Another thing that Francis was known for 
was for his respect and his kindness to animals. Francis recognized that God was, was at work in all of creation. And Francis helped a lot of other people um, to know God and to experience God's presence in creation. This is Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa worked in India. She and a lot of other nuns, um, they worked together to take care of some of the poorest people in, the, in their country. Mother Teresa is remembered for being a gentle and loving caregiver, especially for those who were dying. And this is Oscar Romero. He was a priest in the country of El Salvador and there were a lot of bad things happening there at that time. And Father Romero spoke up and said that God wanted the people to be treated with justice. Francis, um, sorry, Oscar Romero worked with the poor and with the people who were being treated unfairly. And he put his own life at risk to do that. None of these saints were perfect but they were really exceptional people who set a very good example for us. They let God's light shine through their lives and they and their work or their writing or their example help all of us to learn about God. But there are saints that are closer to us than those people are. There are saints in your own lives. Can you, can you think of anyone who has helped you to know about God? For me, the first two saints that come to mind are these people, my mom and dad. They, more than anyone, taught me about God. They read the Bible to me, they took me to church, they prayed with me, and they set a, set a good example. They tried to live lives that were pleasing to God. There were lots of other people along, my, along the way in my life who helped me learn about God. Sunday school teachers and friends and people I went to church with and ministers and college professors. There have been lots of saints in my life. And I hope that there are lots of saints in your life too. Today is a day that we think about them and we thank God for them. Now here, I wanna show you one more picture of a group of saints, some of whom you might recognize. This is us, our church. We are people who are trying to live lives that are pleasing to God. And we are trying to let God's light shine through our lives too, through our actions, through our smiles, through the way we share, and through the words we say. I hope that you can think about something about yourself, something in your own living that would please God. Maybe you are an especially good friend or a good brother or sister. Maybe you are honest. Maybe you are especially kind and, and caring to others. Maybe you help others feel loved Today, on All Saints Day, let's ask God to help us live lives that are pleasing to God, to be saintly, people through whom God's light shines.
Reading from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verse 1, and verses 6 to 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will trust you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. By the time you watch this, Halloween will be behind us again. Was it very different for your neighborhood this year because of COVID? Did your children or grandchildren go trick-or-treating? Did you hand out candy at the door? I can't say if it was different in our neighborhood or not because though I live on the main thoroughfare of Glen Burnie, I never get any trick-or-treaters. I always end up eating all the candy myself. It's terrible. Did you know that this crazy holiday that revolves around dressing up in costumes, getting, going door to door and getting treats, and all things spooky, got its name from the Christian holy day of all saints? The root word of Halloween is hallow. Does that sound familiar? In the Lord's Prayer, we say, hallowed be thy name. Hallow means holy or set apart. And in the Old English, it could mean saint. Saint as in one who is holy or set apart. In medieval England, All Saints Day was known as All Hallows. So the day before All Saints Day was referred to as All Hallows Eve and shortened that became Halloween. So how did a holy day that honored martyrs and saints become what we now know as Halloween? When Catholicism came to the Celtic islands, the priests that were serving there tried to get the people to give up their pagan festivals. One of the biggest festivals was called Samhain which means summer's end. Samhain took place at the midway point between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice, when the earth is turning away from the sun and entering a period of deep winter darkness. Samhain also marked the beginning of the Celtic New Year. The Celts believed that the year should begin in darkness just as day began at dusk. They believed that this time of year, that at this time of year, there was a crack between this world and the other world, that spirits of the dead could return and roam the earth. The souls of dead kinfolk might revisit their homes, and so a place was set for them at the table during the Samhain meal. The people also feared that ghouls and fairies could come and make mischief. And so fires were left burning all through the night during Samhain, and people avoided walking in isolated places. And they might wear costumes and masks to disguise themselves so that any spirits that meant them harm would have trouble finding them. In the eighth century, Pope Gregory III had the brilliant idea that it might be easier for people to give up their pagan traditions if they had a Christian festival to celebrate in its place. 
So he moved All Saints Day to November the 1st, so that it would coincide with the Samhain festival. Later, the church added a second holy day to the mix by appointing November 2nd as All Souls Day. But the Pope's plan did not really work out. Rather than giving up Samhain to celebrate All Saints and All Souls Days, the Celts blended it all together. In our current North American celebration of Halloween, one can still spot some resemblances of the Samhain tradition, but it's pretty hard to spot any resemblance to All Saints Day. All Saints Day was established by the Catholic Church in the seventh century as a day to commemorate the martyrs and the saints. That's saints with a capital S, exceptional individuals who are deceased and have been canonized by the church. These saints were without a doubt in heaven and the Catholic Church taught that believers might pray to the saints and ask them to intercede on their behalf. All Souls Day was established by the church in the 10th century as a day to remember all the other Christians who had died, who might be languishing in purgatory. They might need believers to intercede for them in prayer in order that they might at some point be granted entrance into heaven. Now, Protestant Christians do not have capital S saints. Instead, we consider all Christians living and dead to be small s saints. We note that when the Apostle Paul addressed his letter to the church in Corinth, his salutation said to the saints in Corinth. And then he went on to admonish them for some offensive behaviors and for some wrong beliefs. So you see, Christians are not saints because they have it all together, all the correct beliefs and righteous behavior. No, we are called saints, not because of anything we have done for ourselves, but because of what Christ has done we have been made holy in Christ. So for a very long time, most Protestant churches did not acknowledge All Saints Day. And because Protestants do not believe in purgatory, we also did not mark All Souls Day. But there is a movement spreading among Protestant churches to embrace some of these traditions. All Saints Day have been celebrated with modifications in the Anglican tradition always, but now you might also find it in Methodist, Lutheran, Reformed, and yes, even in United Churches. We celebrate All Saints Day today as an opportunity to remember and to honor all those Christians who came before us, who touched our lives in positive ways, with their love, their acts of service, their witness. We remember those in our own families and in our community and beyond, those whose labors and generosity built this church, those whose teaching and writing have educated and inspired us, all those who have helped us know ourselves as beloved children of God as a part of the communion of saints. But I call this service an All Saints and All Souls Day service because some of the people who have been important in our lives did not call themselves Christians, and yet they may have shaped our lives in positive ways. And they also leave big gaps in our hearts when they die. We need days to remember all those we have loved and lost, to remember all souls. We need time to honor and remember all who have nurtured and nourished us, who have challenged and strengthened us. 
and we need a space to name and acknowledge our grief. And what better place to do that than in the church, in the light and the love of Christ, in the light and the love of community. Marking All Saints and All Souls Day reminds us too of how much one life can impact another. One person's love has the power to heal. One person's hatred can devastate. One person's encouragement can make us brave. And one person's ridicule can make us timid or ashamed. One person's humility might make it possible for us to ask questions that spur us on to new understanding. And one person's arrogance can stifle our ability to risk and to learn. One person's forgiveness can set us free. And one person's bitter bitterness can shut us down. One person's generosity can open doors and one person's greed can slam doors shut. Our lives have great significance in a million small ways. We can do great help or we can do great harm. As we remember all those whom we have loved and lost today, we remember how their lives have impacted ours for good or for ill. And those memories have the power to shape us too, so that we may become saints who know and who show the grace of God, the grace of God that was made known to us in Jesus Christ.
the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 35 to 39. Jesus replied, I am the bread that gives life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who has faith in me will ever be thirsty. And I have told you already that you have seen me, and still you don't have faith in me. Everything and everyone that the Father has given me will come to me, and I won't and I won't turn any of them away. I didn't come from heaven to do what I want. I came to do what the Father wants me to do. He sent me, and He wants me to make certain that none of the ones He has given me will be lost. Instead, He wants me to raise them to life on the last day. A reading from the first of John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Think how much God, the Father, loves us. He loves us so much that he lets us be called his children, as we truly are. But since the people of this world did not know who Christ is, they don't know who we are. My dear friends, we are God's children. Through what we will be hasn't yet been seen. But what we do know is that when Christ returns, we will be like him, because because we will see him as he truly is. This is hope. This hope makes us keep ourselves holy, just as Christ is holy. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. The list of names that I will read today includes the names of people from our church family who have died in the past few years, as well as names of loved ones of yours, whose names you have submitted to me. Grief is a long and often lonely road, and by observing this custom, we acknowledge our losses and honor our loved ones who now rest in the peace of God's presence. Anne Peters. Anne Maynard. Alfredo Montalongo, Anne Healy, Arthur and Irma Kemp, Beverly Thompson, Betty Calvert, Bill and Bernie Collins, Bill Fair, Billy Markham, Clarissa Hendry, Clarence Lappin, Catherine Hodges, Cliff and Marjorie Allen, Dennis Garrison, Joe Babcock, Doug and Peg McElroy, Doug and Margaret McKendry, Dwayne Leakey, Elwood and Margaret Palmer, Erica Thiessen, Erna Scheman, Harold and Betty McKendry, Harvey Kipfer, Hattie and Ted Morrison, Helen Greenlees, Henry Bohm, Helen McMillan, Hope Powers, Jack Allen, Jacqueline Slade, Jim Wilde, 
James and Gertrude Rennie, Joe and Nadine McKendry, John William Greenwood, John and Rita Crossan, Joey Crossan, Joseph and Louise Crossan, Ken Wright, Kenneth Albrecht, Leo Seltanen, Leif Wilson, Marcus Bohm, Margaret Carr, Marlon Larock, Mary Fisher Polk, Mason King, Morris Ziska, Mel Gummer, Nancy Hagen Dyke, Norman Albrecht, Richard Bellringer, Ed and Ruth Kincaid, Roger and Shirley Hurd, Russell Leakey, Tim Henderson, Tim Blacklock, God knows and cares for all these souls. We give thanks for these individuals, for their contributions to our lives, for our memories of them, and for the promise of life beyond death in the peace of God's presence. I'd like to read a portion of the poem On, a death, on the Death of a Beloved by John O'Donohue. Though we cannot see you with outward eyes, we know our soul's gaze is upon your face, smiling back at us from within everything to which we bring our best refinement. Let us not look for you only in memory, where we would grow lonely without you. You would want us to find you in presence, beside us when beauty brightens, when kindness glows, and music echoes eternal tones. When orchids brighten the earth, darkest winter has turned to spring. May this dark grief flower with hope in every heart that loves you. May, may you continue to inspire us, to enter each day with a generous heart, to serve the call of courage and love, until we see your beautiful face once again, in that land where there is no more separation, where all tears will be wiped from our mind, and where we will never lose you again.
As we come before you today with our prayers, there are many thoughts and questions going through our minds. As we continue this difficult time of separation from one another, there is also our fear and apprehension of not knowing what is coming next. As, as we see on the TV, how many people worldwide are suffering during this pandemic. We know that we must continue to practice and self-distance and wear masks, but it seems to get more difficult the longer it goes on. We miss our usual contact with our families and with our work partners and our church friends. Help us to better understand what is happening in our world at this time as we try to continue to do our part in limiting the spread of this pandemic. We ask that you be with the many medical professionals and scientists who are continuing to work diligently to understand and confine the threat to our world. But it is autumn and our world is alive with the beauty of your world. The many magnificent trees with their red, orange, yellow leaves, the sky filled with the many birds flying south, the cool, sunny days. You have provided an abundance of beauty for us, and we thank you for these changing, colorful seasons. Be with us as we learn new ways of keeping in touch with each other by phone calls, texting, Zoom, and distance visits. We feel blessed to be part of this amazing, caring, loving, joyful congregation as we wait until we are able to gather together in worship and fellowship. Amen. Go in peace, and may God bless you and keep you, make her face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, and give you peace today and every day. Amen. <laughs>